Like he got a history of not liking what somebody say and going upside their head. So why would she in turn do the same thing? I don't know. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kennedy. If you're new here, if you're not new, hey girl, how have you been? <laughs> Long time, no see. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I took a break in December. Y'all knew I was taking a break. I told y'all I was taking a break, but y'all still acted a fool in the comments looking for me. But that's okay, because I missed y'all too. Welcome back. <laughs> to the channel welcome to 2024 happy holidays happy new year it's my christmas tree we'll deal with that later but i'm happy to be back i just took a much needed break from everything not just true crime i just wasn't doing anything for the past couple of weeks which i definitely needed okay we did go live sunday night just to catch up shout out to all y'all who catch the live and were there like the whole two hours we chatted it up for so long it was so much fun we're definitely gonna go live again and just to chat it wasn't like a true crime chat we we're just chopping it up catching up talking shit the live is no longer available because i said too much mm -hmm. if you were there you were there if you weren't you weren't <laughs> In the meantime, in between time, there is a new vlog up on the second channel. <laughs> Gorge. They built this store from the ground up in its thing. <laughs> make that make sense. Bye. But welcome to the new year. Happy new year. Thank you guys for still being here and we can slide into today's case. Hey. <laughs> We're just gonna hop into the case right now. I will ramble and catch up. Y'all have seen that already in the beginning. When our makeup is done, but I know y'all miss me or whatever. <laughs> We're gonna hop into today's case, but today's case revolves around somebody acting a fool in the courtroom. And I could not bring up that case without talking about the man who jumped on that judge in the courtroom. So if you're unfamiliar with, I pronounced Deborah and Diabra okay Redding was being sentenced for battery did not like the sentence that the no I'm sorry he wasn't being sentenced he was being denied parole and decided to damn jump across the judge's podium and jump on that lady I cannot I cannot so if you're unfamiliar this all went down some in my eye Really, we just started the video. This all went down in Las Vegas, Nevada, January 3rd, okay? So on January 3rd, Judge Mary Kay Holthus denied his parole because of his history. No, if I'm in a better place in my life. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not, you know, I'm not out there committing crimes now, you know, and, and I feel like I should be given a shot. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that you get a taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Adams, no. he was being charged with felony battery. And the difference from like felony battery and regular battery, a battery charge can be something like simple, if that makes sense. A regular battery charge is just unlawful physical contact, but felony battery is you didn't win up somebody's head and caused damage to this person's body, permanent damage a scar, a broken bone, disfigurement, like those kinds of things. Like you battered this person and left them damaged, if that makes sense, okay? And I wanted to talk about it today, you guys, because some people are saying that the judge deserved it, which is nuts. I don't feel that way. <laughs> but on the same token, like I get where people are coming from because of the way she was talking to him. Would I have talked to a man with his history, his record, his background, the way she did, no. But I'm assuming she said what she said, thinking that he wouldn't be able to get to her. You know, that's kind of crazy that he was able to get to her in the first place. I'm gonna put the video in if you haven't seen it. I probably won't be able to put in all of it, you know what I'm saying? But I'll put as much of the video as I can in and then I will link like the Twitter links and stuff like that if you wanna see the whole thing play out. But just yesterday, I believe he was brought back into the courtroom, baby, like Hannibal Lecter. Muzzled and padded down, which some people were saying was unnecessary, but child, he 
Olympic hurdled over the judges podium to begin with, I think it was justified. But he wasn't being sentenced for what he had done to her, obviously. He was being sentenced for the felony battery that she had denied his parole on. I can't wait to see like what he is sentenced to for what he did to the judge because I can't imagine it's going to be anything light. Hopefully he takes a little plea deal and goes about his business because he definitely did that shit. But I just, I could not talk about today's case without bringing that up. And I do think the judge chose the wrong person to have just a little bit of extra lip with. She denied his parole because he had a history of battery. Okay, going upside people's heads. And people like that who are in and out of jail for attacking people just snap at the drop of the dime. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he got a history of not liking what somebody say and going upside their head. So why would she in turn do the same thing? I don't know. It also makes me think of like all the time victims' families have tried to get to like a killer in the courtroom, but they never all the way make it. Why that never worked out for them, but it worked out for him. Like of all the people who have attempted to do something similar, he the one who made it? The one that's attacking the judge? Girl. All right guys, so for today's case case, we are in Sonora, California in 1988. And today's case revolves around 36 year old Ellie Nestler and her son, okay? Ellie Nestler is a single mom to two kids in 1998. And Ellie has an interesting story. She grew up on a farm. She was very handy, tractor. She would work on cars. Her son, who is also a big part of the case, Willie Nestler, was born during her second marriage. And she and her second husband spent some time raising their kids in Liberia. And they actually had their second child, Becca, in Liberia. And they were in Liberia to begin with because Ellie's husband was a gold miner and he was in Liberia mining gold. But eventually she would move back to the United States and settle down in California because she was basically in Liberia by herself raising her kids on her own because her husband spent so much time in the gold mines. Like that consumed a bunch of his time. My Christmas tree is still up. Argue with your mom. And this brings us to the summer of 1988 when the son Willie Nesler decides that he wants to go to church camp, like church summer camp. It's what he really wants to do and so Ellie makes it happen, even though y'all know, summer camp is not cheap, by no stretch. Summer camp is so expensive. But unfortunately, Willie, little Willie, would have a horrible time at church camp. Yeah, that's where we're going, okay? Buckle up. So at seven years old, Willie starts church camp in the summer of 1988, and there is a change in his behavior. Willie is assaulted by a man by the name of Daniel Driver, who is a custodial employee at the summer camp, who really shouldn't even have no business talking to the children to begin with, you know what I'm saying? But under the guise of being like a strong man of faith, he was able to not only Willie, but four other kids, young boys at the summer camp, and he was a serial offender, a repeat offender. He had actually just gotten out of jail and had been paroled for a prior assault that he was only in jail for for a few months. Got right back out and got the job at the summer camps to do the same thing over again, okay? And when I, you know, I don't like to be super graphic on my channel, but like this was full blown assault insertion all of the things he did very disgusting things to these little boys and then threatened their lives threatened their family's lives to keep them quiet now willie had kept this secret from his family for a year okay he was very terrified 
of driver and what he could possibly do to his family so he never came forward with the information it took about a year for him to come clean to an aunt okay and then after coming clean to this aunt when they go to the police station to report Willie is the last of the boys at the summer camp to come into police. Police are aware, they know what's going on, but they cannot find Driver. So basically the police have nothing for them. They're already aware of Driver's behavior, but he was fired from the school, like the school found out at the same time that the police found out. So when he was fired from the school, he knew the jig was up. He got up and got the fuck out of Dodge before the police could catch up with him, okay? And now, little Willie and all the other boys involved, it's even more traumatic because they've come forward, but now they have no idea, you know, where this boogeyman is. And I say boogeyman, but I think a big part of why Driver was able to get away for so long and able to gain these men's or these young boys' trust is because he was a younger man. He was only 31 when he was tried for what he did to the five boys. So he was younger and seemingly trustworthy. Like he wasn't a creepy old man, you know what I'm saying? The creepy old custodian, you know? And Daniel Driver was on the run for about three years until he was arrested somewhere else for theft. And obviously when they booked and tagged his ass, they realized he was a creep and there was a warrant out for his arrest in California for some nasty, nasty things. So they're finally able to try him. And he had been assaulting kids at the summer camp all the way from 1986, okay? So from 1986 to 1988, right before Willie, he was in that summer camp acting a fool. How? How did this go unnoticed for two years? Crazy. So he's caught in 91 and he goes to trial for just what he did to the five boys at the summer camp in April 2nd, 1993, okay? And remember I said we acting a fool in the courtrooms in today's video? Yeah, okay. Multiple accounts in other victims' families said that this man was fucking disgusting in the courtroom to say the least, smirking, grinning, staring at the kids. And like, because this was a small town, it wasn't a courtroom, courtroom setup. They were kind of just like in the town hall situation, okay? So it says that he was antagonizing the kids in the courtroom just being a dick like you already did the worst and now you're in the courtroom being a douche a double douche and seemingly just trying one more time to intimidate these kids into not talking and seemingly it was working the kids were very distraught in the courtroom uneasy as they would be of course but little willie was very ill and like physically ill throwing up in the courtroom after seeing Daniel Driver and he was seemingly not going to be well enough to testify. I also think a lot of Willie's nerves is the fact that he went last and he saw all the other boys coming off the witness stand in a thousand pieces. You know, he just, he wasn't trying to do that. And Ellie, as you know, any mother would, not wanting her son to go through the same thing she had just watched the other victims go through, pulls a gun in the courtroom and shoots Daniel Driver five times, all of them headshots, okay? He don't even make it to the stretcher, he is done. And I've heard different things about the shooting. Some accounts said that, um, she was in the courtroom with her sister, Ellie was, and she knew that her sister carried a gun. And it says that in the courtroom, she reached into her sister's pocketbook, pulled out his gun, and pow pow powed him five times in the middle of the courtroom. Other accounts said that she didn't go into the purse looking for the gun, that she was looking for something to settle her son's stomach in her sister's purse, saw the gun, and then decided to fire. Other accounts said that she went out to the car and came back with a rifle. I don't know. Which of those things happened? All of them, to me, sound pretty reasonable. You know, after this man had taunted them in the courtroom, acting like Superman, being a douchebag, and then 
I think the justice system is kind of set up that way. Like once sex offenders get away with it one time, they literally feel like supermen. They feel invincible. They're gonna go do their little couple of months in jail and then get out and do exactly what they were doing before. But anyway, she pew pews this man in the courthouse or the makeshift courthouse in front of everybody. Cold case, dead game. It also says that Ellie was not combative or irate, anything like that in the courtroom after she shot him. It said that she shot him, put the gun down, and threw her hands up like, yeah, I did it. Go on, go on, cuff me. And to me, this is very reminiscent of the movie A Time to Kill with Matthew McConaughey, Samuel Jackson. That came out in 1996, technically before my time too, but for the young girls in here, like the young, young girls, because auntie is young too. I know I'll be talking like I'm old, but I'm only 27. But if you have not seen A Time to Kill, Matthew McConaughey, Samuel L. Jackson, Sandra Bullock is also in the movie. It's a fantastic movie. No spoilers, but basically it's the same situation. Samuel L. Jackson plays a black father in, are they in the deep south? Honestly, I can't remember. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Yeah, they're in Mississippi. So in the deep south, Samuel L. Jackson's daughter is abducted beaten and assaulted by a group of white men okay it's not taken very seriously samuel jackson the father takes it upon himself to pew, 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 in the hallway of the courthouse and that all happens in like the first couple of minutes of the movie that's not the spoilers the um the plot of the movie is the trial matthew mcconaughey is his lawyer obviously matthew mcconaughey a white man um is it gets a lot of flack to say the least about representing Samuel Jackson. A lot of the things, it is a fantastic movie and it's also a book if you want to read the book. I think I might actually read the book. Would definitely recommend, especially for the true crime girls. It's, it's great. But anyway, back to Miss Ellie, of course, she also has to deal with the consequences of her actions and she kind of had the public torn. So Miss Ellie is found guilty, obviously. She kind of did it in a courtroom full of people of manslaughter, sentenced to 10 years, but only served three. And this is a whole big thing. Like I said, she kind of split the public's opinion. Some people felt like Daniel Driver deserved it. Well, no, I'm not saying that. Everybody felt like Daniel Driver deserved it, but some people just wanted the justice system to do their thing, and they didn't want that like vigilante type of thing to run rampant in their town. You know what I'm saying? But other people felt like, uh, hell yeah, she did it. I would have done it, and you should have done it too. Okay? So she had a lot of public support. She, from prison, was on Oprah while her son Willie and her daughter and her daughter Rebecca were on the Oprah show physically. Y'all know how Oprah was set up like the TV in the back with the person in jail and then the two people in the front, yeah. He was like a religious, he was like a religious snake, if you will, okay? So the first time he was convicted, the judge was lenient in his sentencing because he basically had a church full of people backing him. They wrote letters, they supported him through his whole little sex offender journey but he was still convicted and found guilty. What, like, I don't, whatever, I don't, whatever, 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 but for whatever reason, his sentence was lenient. And for me, that's a big reason why I feel, that's a big reason why I feel that Ellie Nestler's behavior was justified because really and truly, if the justice system had did what it needed to do in the first place, they would have never even met. They would have never even crossed paths. If that man would have still been in jail the way he should have been. But unfortunately for Ellie, she kind of abused drugs and dealt with drugs um, her whole adult life and ended up back in jail for possession. And she was ultimately also battling breast cancer, okay? She got out of jail for the possession charges in 2006, but was still dealing with the breast cancer. And just as she was getting out of jail in 2006, Willie himself would end up in prison. At just 23 years old, Willie Nestler would also end up in prison for murder. From, from what I can tell, with Willie's murder charge, it was just a little, well, he had spent a lot of time in and out of prison his whole adult life, pretty much. It seemed like, you know, he was just never able to fully recover 
mentally from what had happened to him. And apparently he had attacked this man and beat him to death. And that's why he ended up, you know, in prison for murder. But he had just gotten out of a 30 day sentencing for beating the same man. So he did 30 days in prison for beating that, for beating this guy, got out and then beat him to death and went back to jail. And eventually Ellie <clears throat> passed away due to breast cancer in her mid fifties in 2009. Now for the last sibling, Rebecca, Ellie's daughter, she did an update on Oprah. She's good, I mean, as good as she can be. She's missing her brother and her mother. She has love for both of them deeply, but she, you know, is living life. There's just like an air of sadness around this family, around this case that could have been avoided if this one man would have went to prison when he should have in the first place. After the first time, he should have went to jail and stayed there. He wouldn't have affected Willie's life, Ellie, Rebecca, or the other four victims and their families. And I know a lot of you guys from overseas watch the channel and y'all talk about us as Americans and our justice system. And I wanna know like how y'all treat child offenders in other countries. Like what's different? What are y'all doing differently? Because it's obviously an issue that I just don't think we handle well here. Lastly guys, I forgot to mention that there is a TV movie made about this whole situation. Ellie Nessler, her whole story. Um, if I can find it streaming somewhere for you guys, I will link it in the description because I am interested in watching it myself. But obviously, as always, I want y'all thoughts, comments, and opinions on what we talked about today. Both cases of these people acting up in the courtroom. Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Do you think everybody was in the wrong? I feel like everybody was a little bit wrong. Some more than others. But we do have a true crime TikTok today. We have a bunch of true crime TikToks because y'all been tagging me, but I ain't been posting. The one we're gonna do today is the one most of y'all have been tagging me in about all those bodies that have been found outside of the Mississippi courtroom. I mean, jailhouse, I'm sorry. Breaking news is coming out of Jackson, Mississippi. 215 bodies were found buried behind the Jackson, Mississippi jail. Y'all, this is shocking. If you're not from Mississippi, you may not know that earlier last year, a mother's son was missing. In the end, it was discovered that a Jacks, a off-duty Jackson police officer hit and killed him and they buried him without telling his mother. They tried to use every excuse in the book. They said once the word came out that they knew where the body was, they set a date and time to exhume the body. Can y'all believe that Jackson PD showed up three hours before the mother showed up to witness her son's body being exhumed? Once the body was exhumed, y'all, his ID was in his front pocket. Jackson PD was trying to say that they didn't know who he was. It was just a big hoopla. But now that we are finding out that 215 bodies have been found buried behind the Jackson, Mississippi jail, this is disturbing. As you read here that when this was found out about, mothers came to the press conference and held up pictures for their loved ones and they wanted to know if their loved one was there. Now, y'all help me out what do y'all think should everybody working at the jackson pd be fired behind this and i do mean everybody and then on top of these people's remains being desecrated thrown behind a prison in a mass grave they are charging the families like 250 dollars to buy the remains back from the prison so they can give their families a proper burial Can you put a jail in jail? Can you take a whole jail and put it in jail? Or no, okay, whatever. Whew. That is a wrap on today's video. I'm gonna take my curlers out on camera cause I know y'all like that. And then we'll wrap the video up. <laughs> okay, I guess. Ow girl, okay, I don't like these clips. Okay, okay. I forgot to put lashes on. You can't really have big hair without lashes. This is an old silk press, it needs to go. This is just a little bit more 
Kamala Harris than I like my hair to be. 